So we're catching up on Elite Dangerous with, with David here once again and, and another big E3, another big show for you guys. You seem to constantly bring out new things for us to talk about. Uh, first of all, tell us about this, how this came to be that you're part of the sort of the inaugural Xbox game preview program. Oh, I'm very excited about it, obviously. Um, you know, that we've, we've had a long relationship with Microsoft. Um, doing launch title on Xbox One, and our engine is therefore very mature as well. And doing something like this seemed, I mean, it's an amazing opportunity to do it. And, and also it's a, quite a change for the console, to have early access on console like this, which is it's great, and it's brilliant. It's brilliant to be the first thing people on it. We've had lots of firsts, of course, with Elite, but it's great to, be in <laughs> to have another one. And I'm also really excited to be bringing Elite to the console, full 1080p, not dumbed down, absolutely the full game. All of the updates we've already seen on PC are in there, um, including wings, including power play, so very, very rich. Mm. And, 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 you know, just if we just forget about the fact that it's interesting to sort of be able to, to give the early access experience on console, just the fact that a lot of players can now download a free trial to see what this is about, you know, get in there early, see what see what the game is about. It's also open up an avenue to a lot of new players, I would imagine. Absolutely, that's right. Well, that's happening right now because it went live straight at the, uh, the the show, which is always, you know, it's a fingers crossed moment, but it's, it's great to do that. Yeah. Have you seen any, oh, I mean, of course, we're a little bit disconnected from the rest of the world here at E3, doing everything in meeting rooms and that sort That's of thing, right. but, but have you been hearing reports of like how it's been received and, and uh, what's that like? Well, I've seen, I've seen what's on social media and forums and it's been really positive. You know, people are really enjoying it. So um, I'm excited to get back. And it's, it's funny, when you're at E3, you actually miss a lot of the what's happening at E3. <laughs> it's actually some people back home probably seeing more than we do. It's much easier to keep track of things, you know. We got we got journalists back home who are actually covering the show. I'm just here doing interviews and stuff, you know. <laughs> so, so I have no idea what's going on at E3. But uh, what, you know, one of the things. Well, like, what, how do you how do you envision this sort of? Because you know, the game obviously on PC, you sort of said, yeah, it's you know, we we are confident this is a full release. We're going to update it and so on and so forth. But where do you draw the line on console? Where what kind of things is it that you're looking for? to sort of, for that eventual exit out of game preview? Um, well, firstly, we're going to be updating it on console as well. Um, but I think the, the key thing here is, I mean, when we spoke before, we have continued to update it since, and people hopefully see that. They see new things coming to the game. And so I think what we're doing is a slightly, it's a different approach to games, and which, which I love, so that we've had a lot of players playing more than a thousand hours in the game, and those people, are already they're seeing new content which normally you can't do after that you know after that long and I remember thinking wow Skyrim a hundred hours of content is amazing mm. but you know to be able to hit the thousand hours and people still wanting to play is, is brilliant mm. and that is of course the same across any platform that you will move on to eventually uh, if we if we go away from the from the Xbox version and talk about the, the broader scale the, the broader game uh, what kind of things are you are you working on right now for it um, so we've got other announcements coming for PC um, uh, soon which we're very excited about um, obviously we've already said that the close quarters championships the close quarter combat championships that are already um, coming to Xbox soon will be coming to uh, PC and Mac later this year and that, that, that it'll be for free um, you know, I think that's very exciting as well. I think that you know the, the reason we're doing that on um, on Xbox first is actually it's a better fit to the people who are playing it. You know, the the, the, stay, the play style, the sitting back in the sitting room rather than at a desk. But also, I, I love. Um, I mean, I'm, our audio team have done such a good job. It feels, it sounds so wonderful. But to me, I think it's a bit of a shame that an awful lot of the time it's being played on headphones or speakers that are this tall on a desk, whereas it sounds so rich with a subwoofer and decent hi-fi. You're much likely to have that connected to an Xbox because it's much more likely to be in the sitting room. Certainly, and, and 
and may, or maybe you have some some great headphones on that that really can take advantage of, yeah, of those things right. as well. Um, I, you know, I, it's 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 an interesting thing, and and I gotta say, like, uh, how how is how is how is how's the team transformed with with uh, the development of this game? Is are, are you still sort of building up the team? It feels like it, the the work is even more now than when you when you sort of started. So the the um, the team is bigger than ever which is great. So it's more than 100 people working on the game. And that's why we're seeing so much, that this, this is why things like the Xbox coming on board, the Mac coming on board is good. Because the, you know, the, the, the bigger the game gets, the more we can put in the game, if you know what I mean. You know, it's, it's like a snowball. It's, it's a really positive, virtuous circle that means we can put more and more in the game. I mean, PowerPlay was our biggest update yet. You know, so much in there. And there's actually so much in there, even if you took the power play bit away of all the other things, the things we did for mining, things we did for missions, the three new ships. You know, there's a lot in there that is, brings a lot of richness to the game, and it's free. So, what, what's the approach there? I mean, I, I suppose part of it is sort of uh, iterating on everything that's already in there, and then the other part is sort of adding new stuff. Sort of, is that how you try to balance it between sort of new stuff and, and sort of iterating on what's already there? Yes, we're, we're trying to make it the sort of, the, we want it this to be the best game it possibly can be. And so we're looking, we're listening to people commenting on the game, you know, especially when they con comment constructively, understanding um, where, <laughs> you know what I mean, um, understanding, you know, what would spoil it, for what would make it better for people. And looking at the way, the different ways people are playing the game and seeing if we've got coverage for those. You know, that, that's why we put a lot of sort of love in for mining, for example, on PowerPlay. But also f for the people who feel they've seen everything in the game, hopefully PowerPlay brings another layer of richness that they can participate with. With PowerPlay, it actually rather a new player didn't play it. This is why you've got, you've got to wait till rank two before you can even pledge to a power. Because what I don't want is people to be faced with too much complexity and also to make sure that you have some understanding of what the power is about. Um, because actually in some ways they can make the game harder unless you stay within the area of a power. Or if you want to go out fighting for the power, then it's fun. Do you see what I mean? But you don't want to, I don't want people to do that if that's, they don't, that's not what they want to buy into, if you know what I mean. I mean, th there's there's so much to talk about with this game, so much complexity there. But it is interesting what you say because it is kind of easy to jump into anyway and, and sort of just experiencing part of it because it's it's yours to explore and, and sort of take on the way you want to. I think so, but I think there's also a challenge um, that um, where some people find it quite hard to get into flying the ship. And the, I, what I do is I, I liken it to 10 or 15 years ago when. Um, first-person shooters first became very successful, particularly on on, on console with controller. And I remember a lot of people who, when they first played it, we'd play at parties, you know, four-player, um, competitive or whatever, and they spend their time looking at their feet, mm. you know, and it, very quickly after that it clicked. You know, they got used to the two analogues, and actually they became very good at it, and it became very war rewarding. Um, Elite's quite like that. When you first pick it up, some people find it very hard to understand what they're doing with the ship, hard to line up with a target. Mm. And so one of the things that we've done on Xbox, which we will fold back into PC as well, is we've made the, um, the training missions more engaging and also with a better learning curve, so they're easier to start with. I mean, for example, I'm not brilliant with fixed weapons, um, it's when you're in a f especially in a fight against another player, um, because you need such precision, and if they're trying to duck and dive to get out of the way. So I have, <laughs> I have a ship fitted with gimbal weapons, it makes quite a difference. But you sacrifice quite a lot of the damage to fit a gimbaled weapon. Um, but it makes it more fun, and that's what matters, that, that, that everyone who's in it is actually having fun. And so we've, we've, we've tweaked those a little bit, and we'll put those back onto PC, but trying to make it so that you just get in the game, have fun very quickly, and, and have a rewarding experience. Close Quarters Combat, for example, coming soon to Xbox and this year for PC, um, really helps with that as well, because it's, it's sort of sit down, have a quick session play, and then stop which actually lends itself very well to, to console types of play. But I, and I know a lot of PC players want it as well, so it will come to PC as well, as, as I said earlier. But um, So with all of these things, what we're trying to do is smooth out the learning curve so that there are more steps for people to do that can, they can really engage with. That's, that's really interesting because I think that is one of those things where uh, 
different players have different needs, but also like at different times, I w sometimes I want to have a, a long session, sometimes I just want to get in and sort of have a rewarding short session as well, because right. it's important that it's, it's rewarding, that it's not just something that you do sort of, you know. Absolutely. I mean, if you come in from work and you just want a good old, yeah. you know, something like uh, CQC should be perfect for that. And you probably don't want to risk your ship if you're in that sort of a mood. <laughs> Probably not. And if, if you've had a few beers and you want to just get on your computer late at night, that's also a good time to do that's it. That's right. And I think it, you're more likely to do that, bizarrely, on an Xbox than you are on a PC because it's in your sitting room and you just want a bit of wind down. <laughs> Certainly is. So, uh, as always, it's a lot of things going on with Elite Dangerous. I'd like to thank you for your time and uh, talking to us. Thank you very much. Lovely talking to you.